I believe ultimately the price of gold will go higher than anyone thinks possible. It is the only other tier one asset. The central banks who are suppressing the price so that they can massively accumulate it understand this. And ask yourself this question. If the most well-funded and well-informed traders in the globe for two years running have bought more gold than at any time in history of central banking, India imported 400 million ounces of silver over the last two years. That's double what's on Coleman. When you talk about how high will it go and when will it go, I don't know when it will go, but you can see that the biggest, smartest money in the world is positioning themselves before it happens. Right. And we will wake up on a Monday morning and bang, the price will be so much higher for whatever reason, and it's just the Western market being rendered a scam. Gold rallied to another fresh record high above $2,300 on Thursday, benefiting from a weaker US dollar, which was negatively impacted by the Institute for Supply Management's weaker than expected services PMI report. According to the latest data from the ISM, the Services Purchasing Managers Index fell to 51.4% in March against expectations of 52.7% and below the previous reading of 52.6%. Sub-indexes, including new orders, supplier deliveries, and prices index, also fell sharply from February's reading, falling from 56.1% to 54.4%, 48.9% to 45.4%, and 58.6% to 53.4%, respectively. The US dollar index, DXY, which tracks the dollar's value against six major currencies, has continued to show signs of weakness since dropping below 105 on Tuesday. Though 10-year Treasury yields are slightly up at 4.36%, which typically slows the demand for non-yielding assets like gold, the precious metal has been edging higher for several trading sessions, even as bond yields remained higher. According to renowned bullion dealer Andy Schechtman, gold and silver prices will climb much higher in 2024 because of several important factors that central banks foresaw about two years ago when they started buying gold at the fastest pace in over a hundred years. These factors include shifting geopolitical dynamics, the current state of the global economy, and how badly the US-led West has managed its dominance over the rest of the world. Andy recently had an interview with Small Cap Interviews, during which he discussed his views on metals manipulation, why the smartest money in the world is buying gold and other precious, and an imminent event that will shift power from the west to the east and cause gold prices to skyrocket, possibly in 2024. We will bring you clips from the interview. As we do, please take a little time to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and turn on post notifications for more videos like this. Thanks, and enjoy the video. Well, you know, for the last two years, the central banks of the world, who are not only the most well-funded, but they're the most well-informed traders on the globe. These are the people that know the playbook. Mm -hmm have accumulated more gold than at any time in history, ever, two years running. Um, and, you know, when you realize that gold is reclassified the world's only other tier one asset, they are using the suppression of the Western paper markets against us. They're the ones accumulating all the gold and silver. Um, they're the ones producing all the gold and silver. And it's interesting, I've, for the last few years, talked at length about how the exchanges are being bled dry. Uh, accumulating all the gold and silver through delivery off the London Metals Exchange, off the COMEX, uh, off the, even the Shanghai Gold Exchange, backdooring the ETFs. Massive accumulation and they're using this Western paper price that is hugely, hugely rehypothecated and hugely and hugely suppressed. And they're using it to their advantage and now they're beginning to slowly turn up the heat. In Shanghai, uh, right now, the price of silver is roughly 10 to 11 percent higher than it is in London and in COMEX, on COMEX, where it's about two and a half dollars higher, mm -hmm. creating arbitrage. Gold has been between 60 and 140 dollars per ounce higher in Shanghai than it is in London or in Co on COMEX, creating arbitrage, slowly turning up the heap where traders who have access to those markets will buy in London or on COMEX and sell it for delivery in Shanghai. And just so people understand, just to be clear, clear on something, how do they suppress the price? This is not too long, actually. If I have 5,000 ounces of gold in my warehouse, I will sell 5,000 ounces on COMEX so that I'm market neutral. One goes up, one goes down commensurate. If I have 5,000 ounces in my warehouse and the price drops by 100 bucks an ounce, I'm out half a million dollars. But what I sold short on COMEX goes up the exact same amount. I'm market neutral with my inventory. Right. And I asked my head trader not too long ago, what does it cost for us to buy a COMEX contract for hedging? He says, oh, it's about five or six bucks for the trade. 
as long as we have $7,500 in our margin account. And if it doesn't go against us, you don't get a margin call. So what if I'm a central bank or a commercial bank or a sovereign wealth fund and I have $500 million in my margin account? Right. Well, that allows me to control $15 billion of notional contracts. And so in silver right now, as an example, there are 1,500% more paper contracts than there are bars backing it. In other words, 15, there's 15 times more paper than there is bars. And so if everyone stood for delivery, 14 of them get cash settled. This is exactly what the Hunt brothers noticed in 1980. You will see the price setting mechanism at some point shift eastward to the Shanghai Exchange, to the Dubai Exchange, to the Moscow Exchange, where the countries who are accumulating it all and producing it all and valuing it the real way um, are no longer uh, are no longer beholden to a system that is rehypothecated, that is suppressed by a handful of commercial banks for less than, um, let's just say, less than pure uh, reason. And so I don't know when it happens, but I will tell you in my belief it goes higher than anyone thinks possible. And I'm not selling this to get rich. I'm saying that this is wealth that the central banks understand and realize. And I will go back to one thing, and that is if the most powerful bank on the planet, the BIS, the central bank or central bank reclassified gold as the world's only other tier one asset after over 75 years of it just being dollars and treasuries, mm -hmm. and now they're buying it at record rates, what does that tell you? That there will come a moment when they let it free, when, when the suppression is no longer available to do. And if you naked short and suppress a market when the whole world is trying to go after it, it's a very dangerous proposition. So the, the manipulation is ending, the accumulation is increasing, and real price discovery will come. I don't know if that's in 2024 or 2025 or next week, right. but I do think that ultimately it will, and you can see that if you just take a step back and realize what these very, very smart, and not even smart, well-informed traders and players are, are positioning themselves for. Andy is predicting the complete end of the price manipulation that has plagued the precious metals industry for decades. Big commercial banks in the U.S. have been spoofing the metals market for decades to help the U.S. government keep the dollar's true value hidden from the American populace. Gold and silver are the only true money, God's own money if you will, and when their prices are no longer suppressed, Americans will realize how much value the world's reserve currency has lost since the creation of the Federal Reserve. Andy believes this future is closer than we all believe because other countries have sensed the weakness in the U.S. dollar-led monetary system and are gradually backing away. Little by little by little, then, all at once, with a loud bang that collapses the entire system. Let's get back to Andy's interview, in which he speaks further about the situation in the United States and warns investors about two huge events that could upend the entire world in 2024. But the 2022 balance sheet for the U.S. government showed $155 trillion in debt, $34 trillion on balance sheet, the rest, like Social Security, which is $77 trillion underfunded, yeah. Medicare, Medicaid, government military pensions, put us at over $155 trillion in debt, and they showed $5 trillion in assets. The biggest asset, 40% of our assets, is student debt at $1.6 trillion. We are insolvent. We are broke. The proceeds of, of the excess money that they make as part of the agreement is to invest them into treasuries. How's that work for them over the last two years mm. as the treasury market has obliterated? The, the Fed right now is pivoting, so they say, right? It's signaling that we will choose inflation over austerity. Well, I think there's a, there's a lot going on in 2024. I think it'll be a very, very, very interesting year. Not only do you have the elections here in the States in November, mm -hmm. but you have the, the BRICS meeting in October, where, again, a, a lot of, you know, who's going to be admitted? Are they going to issue a common settlement currency? Um, you know, are are we going to see um, all sorts of events leading up to this? There's 200 meetings in Russia between now and October, 200 BRICS meetings. What does that have in store for us? So as far as that side is concerned, a lot to, to watch. And when we look at what's happening here, you know, in the state, for the first time as a father, mm -hmm. more so as a businessman, I'm concerned. We have tremendous divisiveness in the United States um, where red and blue can't talk to each other anymore, where one third of the country believes the elections are not fair. Mm -hmm. We have um, record debt, uh, record credit card debt, record mortgage debt, record student debt. We have the lowest level of savings ever, yeah. whereby right now 65% of the country is living paycheck to paycheck, 45% of the country earning over six figures paycheck to paycheck. 
uh, we are not united anymore. We have lawlessness in our cities. We have open borders where 10 million people have entered illegally. Uh, we, we have a situation where the judicial system is being questioned by a majority of the people in this country. The problems with the dollar and the mismanagement and the weaponizing, if our country was united the way we were for the last hundred years, if we were a united country, if we were not divided, if we had respect for authority, if we didn't have open borders, if we had a judicial system that the world envied, and you know, Lady Liberty with the blindfold holding yeah. the scales of justice, that to me is, is really what concerns me because in essence what we are witnessing is a cultural war or cultural whitewashing at the same time we are on the verge of a big economic problem. Mm -hmm. Economic problems with cultural problems become very dangerous and I am concerned. I am very concerned that one way or the other you have half of the country that's going to be very upset about the outcome of the election and whether or not it was conducted fairly, yeah. which only exacerbates all of the other issues. So I wish my message was one of more optimism, but I think there's a fine line between pessimism and realism. And I think there's this fear that's permeating. Yes, there's opportunity to be found, mm -hmm. but there's concern that is permeating. Even if people can't articulate it, you can feel it. You can almost cut it with a knife. And I think this might be the most interesting year of our of our my life anyway. And mm -hmm. There's a Chinese curse, may you live in interesting times. And I, as ironic as that is, really do believe that this will be a very, very interesting time leading up to the October BRICS meeting, which could be groundbreaking, and only a month later the elections, which will shape the future of the world. Mm -hmm. This is a poignant moment in the global economy, one for which most metals investors have been preparing for a very long time. We are witnessing a shift from a unipolar world, largely controlled by the United States and the West, to a multipolar world where more countries and regions outside the West have a voice and influence. On the other hand, the current financial system supported by the West is crumbling, and the rising new powers are showing their full support for a commodities-backed system. Meanwhile, silver is currently trading at multi-year highs after rising above $27 per ounce on Thursday. When gold hit $2,300 during Thursday's European session, Silver prices also hit multi-year highs at 27.29 USD per ounce, the highest price since 2021. Silver prices have climbed by over 8% this week with the fresh highs. Prominent analysts and investors believe it could go up even further in the coming weeks as we move into more periods of uncertainty and widespread global economic downturn. Please share your thoughts in the comments section below. Also, ensure you like this video, subscribe to the channel, and turn on post notifications for more videos like this. Thanks for watching.